believe in the name of an awesome God, in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, when the disciples lived with Jesus, had the graciousness, graciousness of living with him, of eating with him, of talking to him, of listening to him, of seeing all the wonders that he had done, they asked him to teach them to pray. And Jesus taught them this magnificent prayer, Our Father in heaven. And it was revolutionary because before that time, nowhere in the whole of mankind had anyone lipsed this prayer, having the audacity to look at God and call him Father. And Jesus gave us this tremendous freedom to look above at the Father, at the maker of heaven and earth, at the one true living God, and to call him not only Father, to call him our Father. And so we are connected. You could be Japanese, you could be Mexican, you could be Korean, no matter who you are, we have one Father. And we are related. We are children of this one Father. We are brothers and sisters, and that is revolutionary. And I will spend my life for my brother, for my sister. I will live and die for my brother, for my sister, because we are one, belonging to one father. And they also made to Jesus this request. Philip asked Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 8, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Philip knew that in knowing who the Father is, in seeing the Father, in knowing what the Father is like, Philip knew satisfaction in life comes from knowing who the Father is. And when we know who the Father is, we can approach the Father with confidence. And Jesus tells the disciples, in verse 7, he tells them, if you would have known me, you would have known the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. I and the Father are one. We know knowledge of the Father is knowledge of the Son. Son. And knowledge of the Son is obtained through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this is the knowledge that every religion in the world, we have nine major world religions. And every religion in the world is striving towards this realization of the Father. Everyone is striving towards this, yearning to know the Father, yearning to embrace the Father, yearning to love the Father, yearning to be loved by the Father. Yes. We should not only love God, but we should allow God to love us. There was an, a man who was an acrobat and he was very accomplished in his fleet. And he would go from countryside to countryside, from city to town, advertising his coming. And a lot of people would come, gather wherever he would put up his tent and they would sit for hours and watch, speechless and breathless. They would watch what he was doing. And often the sights he would choose were over a very big river. And he would tie a tight rope over the river. And he would walk over this tight rope. And there would be silence, pin drop silence when people would watch him. Because a step missed would mean that he would just fall into the river and that would mean sure death for him. So when he came to one particular countryside and he tied this tight rope over the river and when he was walking over it, all the people began to cheer him as he walked from one side to the other and came back. And then he took a wheelbarrow and in this wheelbarrow he packed it with bricks about the weight of 100 kilos. And then the people were just wondering how is he going to get this across the tightrope and walk over this big river, this dangerous river. 
and he took step by step, one step after one step, very cautious, and he was going through. And all the while, the people were just following him with their eyes. And he went on one side and came back on the other side. And the people started clapping. They gave him a standing ovation. And then this acrobat turned to these people, especially to the ones that were clapping the loudest and cheering the loudest. And he looked at them and he asked them, now, do any of you volunteer to come and sit in my wheelbarrow? He said, I've taken a weight equivalent to 100 kilos and I am able to take you. So he said, I will take off the bricks from the wheelbarrow and if any of you volunteer, who is ready to volunteer to come and sit on the wheelbarrow that I can take you across and bring you back. The moment he made this request, the moment he threw this request onto the onlookers, you know, those who were cheering the loudest, you know, they began to put their heads down. And some of them, you know, those who appeared to be the bravest with big mustache, you know, they slowly even thought of slinking away, of sneaking away because they didn't want to be on that wheelbarrow, no way. No way were they going to step into that wheelbarrow. He could, have, he could have been a very accomplished acrobat, but no way were they going to risk their lives and be sitting on that wheelbarrow. And he repeated his request, the acrobat, time and time again, and asked the brave fellows there, and, but none of them would even make eye contact with him. They would be looking away, looking down at the grass, and, and they were thinking, you know, why did I ever come here? And when he kept re repeating his request, there was a, he asked the people, you know, does anyone want to come? And there was a small child who ran up and said, yes, I will come. And he lifted up the small child and put the small little boy on his wheelbarrow. And then all the people were looking once again. Now with even more awe because here, we're not talking about bricks, we're talking about a human life. And he had this little boy on the wheelbarrow and he began to push the wheelbarrow across. And now there was even more tension in the air, even more anticipation, what will happen? Every second of the journey was being watched very carefully. And he took the wheelbarrow to one side and then turned over and came back. And now, this crowd began to cheer even more loudly. And now the hero of the show, who stole the show, was not the acrobat, but the child. So they all lifted up this little child, they threw this little child onto the air, and you know, he was undoubtedly their hero. And after all that celebration, someone asked the little boy, you know, because they couldn't figure out how come he had so much of courage and they asked this boy, you know, how come you volunteered to go on that wheelbarrow? You know, how come you were not afraid? Why, why, did you, why did you opt to go on that wheelbarrow? This boy simply looked at them and he said, he, pointing to the acrobat, he says, he is my father. That's it. He is my father. My dear brother, my dear sister, if you know the father, if you know who your father is, your life will change. The way you live life, the confidence with which you live life, everything will change about you. If you know who your father is, if you know that the wheelbarrow that you are going to step onto is held by your father, you could be going through over the deepest waters. You could be going over fire. You could be going in the midst of wild beasts. But if you know who holds the handle of the wheelbarrow, you will not be afraid. There will be nothing on earth that can bring fear into your heart. You will be fearless and you will be able to be successful. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, if God, your father, is the center of your life. If he is the center of your focus, if everything you do, you do it 
in him and through him and for him. You will reach your goal. You will be successful in all that you do. And that is why Philip said, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Yes, when we know Jesus, we know the father and our lives will truly be blessed. We will be too anointed to be disappointed. We will be too blessed to be stressed. And that is why if you see people who know the father, people who get up early in the morning just to spend time with their father, just to be sitting on the lap of their father, are people, if you notice, who are not stressed. Nothing, hardly anything can stress them up. The traffic jam can't stress them up. An examination coming won't stress them up. If they don't have the money to pay the rent that they have to pay the, the next day, that they are not going to be stressed because they know that the father above knows that the rent has to be paid on this particular day. The father knows everything. If there is no milk powder for your baby, you are not stressed because you know that you are not the only father for your baby. There is a father above and he's far, far more powerful. He is almighty and he is the general manager of the universe. Hallelujah. Once when I was going for my praise and worship session in the morning, I saw this man, you know, hold his little girl and she was sleeping on his shoulder. So when I met him on the way, I told him a hello and I was looking to see if this little girl was asleep or, you know, if she was just half awake and the father told me, you know, she is not going to respond to anyone. The father said, this daughter of mine, every day I carry her in the morning. It is her privilege. It is her right to be carried by me, her father. And she will not allow anyone to disturb or to intrude into this time that she is with her father. It is time for her and for her father. And it was prime time for her. And she will not allow, allow anyone to steal away any moment from that time. And she continues, maybe an hour and a half, you know, the father is strolling in the garden and the child is simply resting her head. This little girl was resting her head on the shoulder of her father. And that was time that she cherished the most and nothing would disturb her. No human would would be able to disturb her. My dear brothers and sisters, do you spend time resting your head on the shoulder of your father before you start a day, before you start every day of your life? Do you gain strength and confidence as you rest your head against the heart of your father? You know, the head is a seat of intellect and the heart is a seat of love, you know. Allow your intellect to be rested in that seat of love so that you will be blessed. You will be surrounded with love. You will be strengthened with love. And this, the Father, we should know, my dear brothers and sisters, our lives will not be the same again if we know this Father. I was born and brought up in the city of Jamshedpur in Telco colony. So if this is India, uh, the state I was living in would be somewhere up here near Kolkata, Calcutta. And so that's Jamshedpur out there. So I did my schooling there. When I would come back from school, if either of my parents, both of them were working, if they were not home before me, it would mean that I had to stand outside, outside a locked house. And one day when I came back from school, I would have been around uh, six to seven years old. When I came back, my parents were not home. So I had to stand outside my locked house. And at that time, there was this beggar that we were awfully and terribly afraid of, myself and my two sisters. And I guess the children in, in the locality, we were afraid of this beggar because this beggar had long 
matted hair. This beggar had fiery eyes, red fiery eyes, and he had a unique way of looking at children and frightening them. And we were awfully frightened of him. We were, we were looking at him, we were filled with dread. And that day, as I was standing out in the veranda, outside my house in the veranda, I saw this beggar had come. It was, an, it was a summer afternoon, a hot summer afternoon. Everyone is tucked away in their homes with doors and windows shut. And this beggar had come to my neighbor's house and he had come to beg. And he had a way of opening the gate and going into the house and knocking on the door to beg. And I was terrified because he had seen me and I knew he would come to frighten me and the next house was my house and he would come into the house and I just didn't know what to do. There was a half wall to my veranda and I just crouched behind that half wall of the veranda and I remember just closing my eyes and I had my fists clenched tight and I closed my eyes because I didn't know what would happen to me. I couldn't face what I was going to see in a few minutes time and I remember for the first time in my life I really sincerely genuinely cried I cried out because I knew the prayer our father then and I knew Jesus had talked about a father that all of us share and I for the first time I cried out I screamed silently I screamed out to the father I would have cried out a million times in those minutes, crying out for help, desperate for help. Do something and do it now was my prayer. And I continued praying like that desperately, intensely and fervently. And I know that is how prayer should be intense and fervent. Those moments taught me what prayer should be. And I continued to pray in this way. And what I could hear was the click of the gate of my neighbor, which meant the beggar finished begging in my neighbor's house and was going out. And I could hear his footsteps coming towards my house. And that was it. I continued to bombard heaven. And then at those moments, crucial moments, what I heard was not the click of my gate, but what I heard was the horn of my father's yellow scooter. And when I heard that, do you know what I did? I sprang up from my hiding place. I sprang up and I was all smiles. My father had come. And you know, I would have, you know, done so many things at that moment because there was an explosion of joy an explosion of confidence, an explosion of love in my heart. And I actually looked at the beggar. I looked at him at his eyes because there was no fear in mine. You know, I, I would have jolly well, pretty well gone and shaken hands with him. I would have even, I wouldn't mind even calling him over for tea because all fear had gone. My father had come and there was in this scenario, there was a knowing born in my heart, a deeper knowing. And that is behind the figure of my father. My father is, you know, having him around is like too good to believe. And in those moments, I was introduced. Those moments of trauma introduced me to another father. How about it? One father too good and another dad. Another dad in heaven. Another dad who is present everywhere. Another dad who sees everything. I was introduced to this dad. And that day, this impression was like a seal in my heart. And that seal is burnt in my heart. This knowing that I have a father. And this knowing has changed my life forever. And it changed the way I thought. It changed the way I looked at things. It changed everything about me. And I became 
a person who was much more calm. I became a person who began to consult the father, began to actually speak to the father and I knew, yes, he is someone I can speak to and yes, he is someone who speaks to me and I began to enjoy this, this union with the Lord, this conversation with the Lord, which I used to take time to converse with the Lord when I was standing in queues, when I was alone, I would you know, enjoy being alone because then I could talk to my father undisturbed. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, when was the last time that you had a conversation with your father in heaven? Did you tell him about the little, little things of your life? Did you tell him when you were sitting for your breakfast, did you tell him to come and join you? When you saw the sunset, did you tell him, oh father, this is beautiful, a beautiful backdrop. Have you spoken to your father this, this day? Have you spoken to your father about your family members? Have you told your father what hurts you most in your life? Speak to him today and you will grow. Your insides will expand. Take time to talk to him. Take trouble to talk to him. Jesus would take the trouble to climb the mountain to be alone with his father and talk to him. He would take the trouble to sit up all night, to kneel all night and talk to his father. He would take the trouble to rise up early in the morning to speak to his father. Today, be blessed. Be blessed to know the father. Be blessed to speak to the father. It doesn't matter who you are, which religion you belong to. The father, the same father I have is the same father you have and he is crazy about you. And do you know, you are his precious child. And do you know, he will invite you over to sit on the table with him to have the meal. Do you know that he will give you the key to the treasury? You know, his treasury, whatever belongs to him, belongs to you. He will not hide the key away. He gives you all that he has. Psalm 94 verse 9 tells us, He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? Yes, my dear brother, my dear sister, he who planted the ear hears you. He hears your silent prayer. He who formed the eyes sees you. Though you cannot see him, he sees you. Let us close our eyes for a moment and know that the Father sees your every need. He sees every pain in your life. And as he sees you, he loves you. And he's heard every complaint in your life. He's heard all the moaning and the groaning in your life. And every prayer that you have to make to him, he will hear. Lord Jesus, we thank you for introducing us to this magnificent father. And I pray for each and every one of my brothers and sisters that every one of them may know this father and be blessed. Amen.